Hey everybody, it's Genoa with The Crafty Mess and I'm here with another video tutorial. Today I'm going to be making a rolling tray set. And during this tutorial, you'll learn how you can upload a pattern into Cricut Design Space and how you can create your own SVG from scratch. Stay tuned if you'd like to know how I completed this craft. Okay, so from Cricut Design Space, um, I'm going to show you how I built or made this um, SVG slash PNG that I'm going to use for my customer's um, tray bundle. So let me just show you briefly how I built this. We're not done with it yet, so I'm going to show how I got to this point so far, and then we'll finish it together. And I apologize up front, but my mouse has been acting really, really weird and funky. And uh, yeah, I'm doing the best that I can with it uh, malfunctioning every couple seconds on me. So first thing I did is I went ahead and I imported a circle from the shapes menu. And then I right away duplicated that circle. The second circle I brought in using the arrows here, I just made just a tad bit smaller than the first. And then I drew a box around both of them, went up to a line and hit center. And then I, making sure that they were both still selected, went over here to the bottom right and hit slice. Okay, so then I'm gonna go up and Holding down my shift key, I'm going to select both of those inner circles and delete them. And now I'm left with just that outer circle. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and duplicate it. And the second circle, I'm going to make smaller than the first. Kind of put them in the middle like that. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to take a box and draw around both of them, go up to a line, and center. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit attach so they're both attached together. That way when I move them around, they move around together. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our shape menu and I'm going to select a star and take that star and size it down. And this may not be exactly the same as the one that I was working over on the right, but I just want to show you how I created it. And then I duplicate the star for the other side. And not really worrying whether or not they are all center, because I'm going to draw a box around everything. Go up to our line menu, and I'm going to center vertically. Now that I know everything is centered and making sure everything is highlighted, I'm going to go and hit attach again. So everything over here is still all separate layers. I've just attached it so that they're being sized and, um, you know, that I don't lose my centering um, that I've done so far. Okay, so the next thing I did was I went ahead and went to my text menu and I typed in the words in all caps smoke weed and I'm just going to take those words put them up at the top Let me move that down just a little bit so we can see what's going on put them up at the top and I'm going to using these arrows size that font down just a bit Okay, that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to go back to the text menu and we're going to do this again. So let's see. I'm going to put this at an even 33 for the font size for this smoke weed. Okay, and now I'm going to go back to text and I'm going to write every day. Uh oh, see, there we go with that mouse again. I'm going to type in every day. 
and then we're going to go up to the top where it says font size and we're going to type in 33 so that it matches the font at the top. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a box over all of those words and the circles and stars. We're going to go up to a line and we're going to do center horizontal. Okay. All right. Now, highlight the smoke weed and we're going to curve this word. So we're going to go up to the curve menu and taking the sliding bar, we're going to move it to the right to curve the words down so it fits inside that circle. Okay. Now we're going to highlight the word every day. And we're going to do the same, but we're going to curve it up. We're going to go up to our curve. And we're going to now move this one to the left so that we can curve the words up. And I'm just going to move this down so it's more. Uh -oh. Go back. Just want to highlight the words every day only. I'm going to move them down. All right. So now I'm going to do the same thing I've been doing, which is draw a box over everything, and I'm going to hit attach. Okay. Last but not least, we need to put in our marijuana leaf. I have one that I just got from Google, and what I did is just save the image into my computer. I hit upload image. And then I brought it over into Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to highlight the image and hit insert. Here's my image. I put it in the middle using the arrow buttons here. I sized it to the size that I want, making sure that it fit into the circle. And then I drew a box over everything and I went to align center and everything still highlighted now uh oh I scrolled all the way over to the other side with everything still highlighted um, I'm gonna go ahead and this time I'm going to hit weld so now everything is welded together and it's made everything into one layer you can see that over here on the right all these layers down here are associated with this one that I was working on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just exit out of that one. So we're left with just this one layer. So we just basically essentially created an SVG. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to the color that I want. So I'm going to hit the green. And I don't really like that color. I want the green to be a little darker, but I don't want it as dark as this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to move my thing around to get it to the color that I want. So this is kind of like in between this color and this color. Okay, now my customer wants to have a tie dye background behind this. So what I did, I'll go ahead and uh, take you over to my browser to show you how I got the tie dye background. Okay, so at my browser, what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the tie dye background just to let you know how I did this. So I put in tie dye pink background, high resolution, and this was the one that I wanted to upload. So I right click on it, save image as, name it whatever you want to name it. So this one was tie dye pink background. And then you go ahead and hit save. And then you can upload this as a pattern into Cricut Design Space. So let's go back over to our Cricut Design Space and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how you would upload your pattern. You'd go here to upload. 
And instead of upload image here on the left, we're going to go to upload pattern, which is on the right. Browse. We're still going to browse and find our image like we would with any other um, picture that we're going to bring into Cricut. But this time it's not going to show at the bottom along with our other images. And the screen looks just a little bit different. So here you would name your pattern. And that is a requirement. It has to be named something in order for you to bring it in. And then you can highlight some of these things that would help you to find it later with filters. I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. And again, it says up here that my pattern was uploaded successfully, but it's not going to show here on the bottom. I need to find that under print patterns. OK, so let's go back over to our Cricut Design Space. And let's bring our pattern on and use it in our design. Okay, so we're back here at our canvas. And now what we're going to do is upload our pattern onto a shape. So I'm going to be using a circle because that's going to be the background for the SVG we just created. And let's see, our circle right now is five inches. So I'm going to make this one five inches as well. Now what I want to do is I want to go up here to the top and I'm going to change my circle from a cut to an actual print. And I don't want it to print this gray color. I want it to print with our tie dye pattern. So I'm going to use this drop down menu and change it to pattern. And then I'm going to select our tie dye pattern. And now our pattern has been put onto our circle. If you notice here, though, the pattern has this line going across it. So I'm going to need to alter the pattern a bit so that line doesn't show. Because right now, if I were to use it, and let me arrange this SVG to the front, we would see that line behind our SVG, and I don't want that. So go ahead and click on our circle, go up to the top to the pattern, and we're going to hit Edit Pattern. OK, so this is what it looks like right now. I'm going to make the pattern a little bit bigger so that it doesn't have that line in it. And just kind of play around with it a bit. OK, and then I'm going to hit this vertical button down with this drop down just to kind of move that pattern down a little bit. So I still see the line, but I think that it'll kind of be hidden behind our SVG. So let's give it a try and see how it looks. OK, so I'm going to move the SVG back over top. And I can still see it just a little bit, but our SVG does kind of block that line, so it's not so much of an issue anymore. I'm going to draw a box over everything and then go up to the top and center it all. Okay, and now that I have everything where I want it, now I'm going to hit the flatten button. And I'm going to make this whole thing a print and cut. Okay. So here is our design that we've created. I'm going to print this out on sticker paper and put it onto my rolling tray. I'm also going to print out this design and put it on some stickers so that I can create a matching bud jar. And look, I can also go ahead and create a matching sticker for a big lighter. So I'm going to show you now how we do that. OK, so what I did is um, I'm going to go ahead and use this same design to make my lighter wrap and to make the topper for my bud jar. So I just hit the undo button, which is this back arrow here a few times to go ahead and separate the SVG and the circle from each other so that we can use both the pattern and the SVG to create the designs for the others. So first things first, let's go ahead and insert uh, a shape. We're going to insert a square and we're going to make the square two 
2.75 by 2.75. This is going to be for our lighter wrap. I'm using a standard big lighter and that's the about the size of the sticker that I'm going to need to cover my lighter. So I'm going to go up top and I'm going to change it from the no fill. And again, my mouse giving me the blues uh, to a print. And then I'm going to click on the color and change it from color to pattern. And we're going to choose our tie dye pattern again for our lighter wrap. And I'm going to edit the pattern so that we can remove that line. I'm going to do that first by sizing it up some. And let me try moving it down a little bit using the arrow keys. And I'm going to size it up just a little bit more. Now I'm going to use that arrow key up. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to do your best to put it as close as possible to perfect as you can. All right, I like the way that looks, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. This is going to be for our lighter wrap, so I'm going to take this and duplicate it. And then size it down a bit. The majority of that you want to just be in the front. And then I'm going to draw a box over both of these and go up to our line and hit center. And once it's centered, then I'm going to flatten it. So now we've just created our sticker for our lighter. Okay, so this is what we were going to use to put on our tray. I'm going to highlight both of them and center and flatten. And I'm going to need one for the top of my bud jar. So I'm going to make that the size of about 1.8 inches. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate that circle. And this one I'm going to make it about five inches and that'll be for our actual tray. So now we're going to hit the make it button. And that will take our designs over to our Cricut mat. So I need an eight and a half by 11 letter sheet size label paper and I'm just using regular label paper that I purchased from Amazon. I'm going to go ahead and load this paper into my printer. First let me go ahead and hit continue and then I'm going to send it to my printer so that it'll go ahead and cut out, or I'm sorry, print out the image for me. And that noise you hear in the back is just me loading that sticker paper into my printer. The printer that I'll be using to print this out is an OfficeJet Pro 8600. And I'm going to remove the bleed and I'm going to check the box for system dialog. And I always like to do that so that I can go in and change my preferences. So I'm going to Select my printer again, hit the preferences button, and I'm going to change this to best because I want a high quality print. And then I'm going to go ahead and print it out. And then I always use the printable vinyl as the material because I like for it to cut out just the sticker and not the backing sheet for the sticker. So go into your Browse all materials and then you're going to search for printable vinyl and then I always put the little star there so it's going to show up anytime under my favorites. Okay so now let's go ahead and go over to our Cricut machine and I'm going to show you how you would load this. Okay so as you can see, I've printed out my images onto my label paper. This is label paper that I purchased from Amazon and it came in a pack with a hundred labels. Um, I don't know the name brand, but I will post the link below where I purchased this if you'd like to use this same paper. So what happens is when you print it out on the Cricut, um, using the print and cut feature, Cricut is going to print it with this black registration box around the images. You cannot remove that registration box. That's needed in order 
to have your Cricut align your images up so it can cut out the images precisely and um, not have everything all messed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and load, or not load, apply my label to my mat. And I'm using a Paper Studio mat um, that I was able to get with a 50% coupon and it came with two 12 by 12 mats. Um, they're just the same size as the, uh, as the Cricut mats. So let's go ahead and take this over to our Cricut machine and load it up. Okay, so we're at our Cricut machine. I'm going to go ahead and hit this blinking arrow to load my mat. First thing it's going to do is it's going to go through some steps of um, recognizing these registration marks. So I'm going to hit the flashing cut button and then my machine will go ahead and take care of the rest. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this portion of the video. Okay, so we have our images that have just come out of our Cricut machine. I'm going to turn my mat over and pull my mat up away from the backing as opposed to pulling the paper up off the mat that way and that just helps to prevent your paper from curling up so that's just a helpful hint if you guys want to keep your paper from curling so much instead of taking your image and pulling it up off the mat like that turn it upside down and pull your mat up okay all right so i'm going to show you just how precisely it cut out these images for me I'm going to pull the sticker paper away and you can see that it's cut it out perfectly so these are my images okay this is the tray that I'm going to be using it's just a regular Dollar Tree tray that I have spray painted with this pretty pink color and I've allowed that tray to dry completely. Okay, and then this is the bud jar that I'll be using. This is also something that I purchased from my local Dollar Tree. And then here's my Bic lighter. So we're gonna be covering it. You're not gonna see the blue color. So first things first, let's just go ahead and pop our bud jar sticker on top. And again, using that printable vinyl setting on my Cricut makes it so that my images stay on the backing paper. When I use the sticker paper um, setting, it cuts through the sticker label paper and it cuts through the back. So I like this because I can keep my images on this backing paper as long as I need to until I'm ready to use them. I am going to take this image and pop it on top of my bud jar and I'm gonna go ahead and put a layer of triple thick on top of that to seal it on top okay so bam boom boom that's done now I'm going to take the label that we made for our lighter I'm just gonna cut off that little bit of white that's showing right at the top. Okay, I'm going to take my lighter and I'm going to try my best to center this image. You want to make sure it's in the right place because once you stick this paper down and like I'll put just a little bit of pressure to it, it is not going to really budge. Okay, so just taking that label and wrapping it around the lighter. 
and working out any bubbles or creases that may be there. So there we have our lighter that goes with our tray now. And um, I've seen where people have taken like a shipping tape and um, gone over this with shipping tape or epoxy or what have you. But these, these labels pretty much don't come off. I mean, unless you're putting them in the washing machine, which my husband has done, um, the labels don't, don't really mess up too much with this. Okay, and then last but not least, boom, boom, we have our decal that we made that we're going to put on our tray. And it looks like I may need to calibrate my machine again because um, it does have a little bit of white around the outside of the image. So that's not an issue. You can go ahead and recalibrate your machine. Make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, I'm just going around just a little bit of the outside, try to get that white that's showing, the little white border. At the same time, trying not to mess up my image. Okay, so holding that over my tray, making sure it's center. Okay, and then I'm going to take it and press down. Okay, so essentially what I would do next, and these are just my next steps, I'm not going to actually um, do them on camera, but what I would do is I would take some of the Pylon UV resistant clear spray paint, and I take this tray outside, I spray it with about three coats of this, letting it dry 15 minutes in between each coat. And make sure you have it in an area where it's going to be dust free. It's not going to pick up any dirt. Um, I did this outside and didn't bring the tray in to dry. And when I came out, I had a whole bunch of leaves on my tray from the wind blowing. So make sure that you are. I think that's so cute. Um, putting it in a dust free area to dry. And then once it is dry completely, which is about, it says on the can, about two hours then we can go ahead and apply our epoxy coat on there and then the epoxy will take about 24 hours to dry so I'm not going to actually do the spray paint and the epoxy coat on camera I just mainly wanted to show you guys how you could create your own design and SVG in Cricut Design Space you don't have to have any fancy software pay any extra to be able to make SVGs and designs from scratch. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please make sure you give me a thumbs up. Make sure that you also like the button. Oh, like the button. Oh my goodness. All right, you guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And please, if you've joined me before for our videos, I want to thank you for coming back. Please make sure you hit the like button, comment, and share this video if you think that it can help someone else out. If this is your first time joining me, I also want to thank you for sticking it out with me. And please come back. Hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. This is Janoa again with the Crafty Mess signing off, and I'll see you guys next time.